Hey folks, this is Gray here, and today we're going to be looking at the Gerber Dual Force 12-in-1 Multi-Tool. We're going to look at some of the specifications of the unit, we're going to kind of do some testing with it, and kind of go generalized of how it looks and what you could use something like this for. Multi-tools are used a lot in everyday carry, uh, and there's a lot of different multi-tools out there. And uh, I carry several different ones, because uh, one is none and two is one. So I carry multiple backups when I carry multi-tools. And folks, I have to say this out loud, and the reason why I like to say this is because some people say, well, what do I need a multi-tool for? Once you have a multi-tool, you'll notice that you'll use it for so many different purposes that it will shock you how often that you'll use a multi-tool. Let's get into this Gerber Dual Force uh, multi-tool 12-in-1 little gadgets on this bad boy, uh, and let's test it out and see how well it does. All right, folks, so let's take a look at this Gerber Dual Force 12-in-1, and to kind of give you a comparison of the size, uh, this is my Leatherman OHT. You can kind of see they're very similar in size. Uh, I like the bulkier stuff, the heavier-duty stuff, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. And let's open this up so that you can kind of see the length comparison as well in regards to these two uh, devices. So these kind of pop out the front, and these fold out, just to kind of give you an idea of the size. And what I do like about this Gerber is the grip. It feels really nice in the hands. It has a nice grip. You control the grip versus this one that has the spring or the resistance in there. It's not necessarily a spring, but you kind of get where I'm going with that. And uh, all in all, I like that. Now, the difference I've noticed in the two is I like my cutting up here versus down here. I like to have my cutting, see where, if you can see those cutting edges right down there versus the cutting edges right here on the top. Now this is not really a comparison review, I just kind of wanted to give you guys some reference in regards to the tool. This is adjustable uh, with the pliers, so you can open them up or down, so that is also a benefit to that. And like I said, you can see the difference in the grip patterns on both uh, of these multi-tools. All right, so now let's kind of focus on this guy here. So what you got here is a blunt nose layer construction jaw. Uh, basically, I don't know if you can see that there, they're compressed. Uh, this is the blunt nose, what they mean by that there. Again, it's a very pretty device uh, or tool, per se, instead of a device. Uh, I, I like the, the look of it. Uh, it's a small fastener, you know, pliers uh, where you can, you know, get in tight uh, if you'd like right here. Or you can use this also for a regular pliers or adjustable two-size slip joint jaw, uh, which I like as well that you can widen that open depending on what uh, you plan on using this for. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. Again, it does have the wire cutters that are set right here, and uh, also wire strippers, depending on how much pressure you apply, of course. Uh, you have to be kind of conscientious when you do certain things with this, and we'll look at a couple of different options here when we do some of the testing. But anyways, let's kind of get into what you got on here and the tools that you're going to have. You have this nice, sharp, plain edge blade here. Um, we could always do this test right here to cut off some hair. But as you can see, I'm starting to go bald there because I keep on shaving myself with all this stuff. But it is a clean shave. Uh, definitely cut off my hair. So it definitely comes sharp out the box uh, in regards to the knife. I like the way it holds so that if you were to use the knife, depending on what you're using it for. So a lot of people are going to ask, well, how well can the knife cut? So we get some paracord here. And let me see here. You can kind of see uh, all the different threads inside of the paracord. It has some extra additional stuff in there for fire starting. But, you know... Everybody wants to see how well it cuts. As you can see, that's pretty, that's almost like butter when it comes to paracord. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and double up the paracord here and just try that again uh, to see if it can cut through that as well. And it did a good job, as you can see there. So this thing is very sharp out the box in regards to cutting here. This is how you would retract the blade by pushing that button right down there, which is gonna release the locking mechanism for that blade. And then let's move over to this side here. This is your saw. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty coarse saw, to be honest with you. It does have a nice, solid saw on there. So I kind of wanted to do a uh, zoomed up view as I'm cutting this here. So let's go ahead and cut that. And it cuts relatively quick. It's not the best thing trying to do this on, on camera, but this is the quickest thing I found. You can see the edge is pretty clean uh, as you're cutting. All right, so now that we've looked at this side with the saw and the knife, let's kind of flip this thing over and see the other tools that you have access to. So if we flip this thing out here, you're going to have basically a chisel. And you can see the edge on that there. I've been putting this thing through its paces, just kind of working with it. But you have a, uh, a fine edge and a coarse file there as well. 
And uh, this chisel is probably the biggest chisel I've ever seen uh, on a multi-tool. I guess we can kind of put it to its test. I was kind of playing with it just before I started this video. You can see where I was kind of going with here, just to kind of see if I could dig into the wood uh, and, you know, how, how it would do. And, uh, I'm you know, I'm very surprised, as you can see there. And sorry for all the noise, because my mic's probably picking up a lot of this additional stuff. But if you can use it for a chisel, I mean, to get into stuff, uh, it does work. All right, so now that we saw kind of like the chisel in action, let's go ahead and close that and then look at this here. And this is your screwdriver. And what I like about this thing here is it's magnetic. So these things kind of pop in there and they'll stay in there. I love that fact. And when you grip something, the way that this is angled, some people have asked, why is that angled up in this way? It's because when you grip this, you want to be able to use it like an actual screwdriver when you're using this. Because have you ever had the ones that are, it just seems really awkward in the hand? So giving you that kind of like that center point when you're trying to put a screw in. I wish I had a screw here to show you. Of course, that's the only thing that I forgot. But also down here at the bottom, you have these two additional, here you have another flathead and a smaller driver right there that you can just remove these and swap these out on the beginning. And you can buy a whole kit online with these, uh, these additional add-ons to put in this pouch. But I like the fact that they're magnetic. So when they go in there, they kind of stick to there. They don't fall out. I, I do like that. And like I said, these things are really easy just to pop on out. They're really easy to access versus some of the other ones that you kind of like got to dig for. So I like the way that Gerber did that. I love that little, it just seems very easy to flip those out and get to them when need be. But all in all, that's a pretty nice little gadget there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this thing up and kind of play around with the pliers a little bit. And like I said, I'm not going to go through all the settings basically because you have different types of bolts that you can use. But let me go ahead and put that down and just kind of show you what I mean by that is by the grip of the bolt itself. So I like that this has a nice tight grip on here and you can kind of like, you know, if this was very tight, you can easily move that around uh, as you're trying to like, you know, you can kind of like use it like a normal set of pliers right there and just keep on adjusting and moving depending on what you got going on, you know what I mean? And then of course you have that smaller area. If you had smaller uh, nuts or bolts or whatever you're trying to work with, you can do that. But this is more for this size right here. So I like having that full size plier aspect uh, and then the adjustability of it, of even making it more uh, wider. So for bigger bolts, this won't fit this, but of course, but you can see how you can have a lot more play with that versus some of the other multi-tools out there. Anyways, I do like that aspect. Let's kind of move on to these cutters down here and uh, kind of see how strong they are. I'm gonna actually put them to their test today through some metal. Uh, we're gonna probably use that uh, rat trap, that thing that I had and see if we can cut through that piece of metal there. All right, so as you can see, those, those are the, the, the cutters right there. Kind of give you an idea on both sides. Now I'm gonna take this to the extreme. This is a piece of metal here and we're gonna see if we can cut through it with this. Now this is more for wire cutting than this, uh, but as the test, I just wanted to see how hard it would be to cut through a piece of metal uh, like this. And as you see, that did that simple, very, very clean and simple. The cut was nice, very impressive, you know what I mean? And this is like, a, this is just an old rat trap, so I figured I'd cut it apart. But anyways, you know, using the, whoops, and see, that's the problem. I, the only negative thing I can say is I like my cutters up front uh, versus, you know, down here, because then if I want to get down in here, I have to move that around. But all in all, you know, getting these cutters into a certain spot, they work very well. So if you're going to, you know, try to cut this here, lay it on that blade there, and snap and it cuts it away. So I give them credit. You can apply a lot of pressure there. And let's kind of take a look at that there uh, on the blades as I cut those two pieces of metal. So it took some of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, coloring or the coating off. But other than that, uh, they're intact. The blades are still there. Uh, so they're pretty beefy in that aspect that it took care of that without actually, you know, gouging out a hole in this area right here. So other than the, like I said, the coating coming off, it did a great job. But that's kind of like some of the other things, uh, I, you know, kind of just doing a brief overview of this unit here. Uh, I'm really curious about your guys' thoughts on something like this. Is it too big for you? Uh, what do you think about this? You know, for me, it's 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 in a good size, uh, like most multi-tools. I like all the different functions that it has. There's probably a few things that I'm missing in here in regards to like the ruler. I'm thinking the ruler's right here, which this ruler, if I recall correctly, it's an eight inch ruler or 20 centimeter, centimeter ruler uh, that you can use for that. Uh, and there's probably a couple other little odds and ends that I might be missing on this, but I think I covered most of it. Um, it's a very hefty unit. Uh, I like this EDC tool uh, in regards to having a multi-tool, and I think I'm going to start carrying this uh, and using it over the next several months and see how often I use the tools that are on this. 
And down the road, it will do a follow-up. And if you guys want, we could always down the road do something like a comparison review. Basically, the Leatherman uh, or any other multi-tool that you guys can think of, I can buy them uh, and do some comparison side-by-sides -side in regards to how well they work. But all in all, that is the Gerber Dual Force 12-in-1. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Anyways, folks, I will link everything down in the description if you care to take a look at this and go deeper into the specs and look at the pricing and stuff like that. The pricing fluctuates depending on their sales. Um, and uh, I will uh, put any other additional information down below. I'll also add a pinned comment. If you got any value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button. Truly appreciate it. And again, if you're new here, please subscribe. Again, we do lots of different things on the channel from reviews to gardening to long-term food storage to prepper hauls, you name it. We do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Anything to get you folks ready for what may come down the pipe. Other than that, folks, remember, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. God bless, and thank you again for watching.